Hi everyone. Wanted to take you out on my farm today and show you an edge that I plan to soften. This whole edge right behind me here is basically agriculture land with a hard edge. It goes right to mature timber. In this case we have CRP ground with warm season grasses. But nevertheless, there's very little brush, very little bedding opportunity, opportunity, browsing habitat, nothing. In the past, I wanted it that way because I did not want deer to bed in this draw, on this ridge line. I've now changed my mind after owning this farm for 10 years, and I want to create some bedding habitat on both sides of this ditch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dropping trees to create what I call a soft edge. You might hear this. Uh, called edge feathering. I call it creating a soft edge. So you basically go from agriculture fields to woody browse, small shrub type trees, and then your mature trees. The only way to do that is to start cutting some of these trees out. Basically about 10 yards in the woods. You can leave them lay in the warm season grasses. And I like to do it in pockets. So I like to go real heavy for about 10, 20 yards, leave an opening and then go real heavy for about 10 to 20 yards and leave an opening. That way your doe family groups, your bucks, they can bed around these pockets of thick brush, maybe some hinge cutting, but they have ways to get in and out with these small openings. So thick, open, thick, open. That's how I like to make my soft edges. I'm gonna fire up the chainsaw here and leave the camera running. And then we'll fast forward that when we watch it back. And then maybe I'll wrap it up by showing you a different piece that I did last year that the deer in one year already started using it. So what's the point of creating this soft edge in this area? Why am I doing this? Well, in this specific example, this ridge and ditch system is an area on the farm in the past I did not want deer to use as bedding cover. I wanted it to strictly be a pass through area. Now I want to expand the bedding opportunities on my farm and this is one area I want to do it. The fastest way to do this is to drop these trees along this edge to create a soft edge. The trees that I drop into the warm season grasses provide instant cover in these pockets of really thick cover. Any hinge trees will stay growing and provide food in year one. And the open canopy will allow brushy things like coral berry and red dogwood and maybe even briars to grow and flourish by opening up that canopy. And deer will now utilize this area, these pockets of thick cover for bedding. One thing that I see people do a lot is they create better habitat, whether that's bedding cover, food plots, and they do it just to create better habitat. And I think that's actually a bad idea. The bedding pockets and food plots and everything else you do on your farm should serve a purpose. You don't want to create bedding areas where you don't want deer to bed. A prime example of this would be to create this thick edge where deer would bed and then walk by it every day or having to walk by it every day because this is your entrance area. You need to think some of this stuff through and make sure that you provide your bedding pockets and your food sources and your other habitat work in the right locations. So that's it. Small chainsaw. I think I'm using an MS-170 by Steel right now. I think they're $180. Five minutes. Created a big pocket of bedding cover. I want to show you a couple things. I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to kind of walk with it here. Most of these shingle oaks lean out. You'll find that when you're doing this, the softening of the edges, these trees lean out. So it's real easy to cut these smaller ones off. You can see that's all I've done here. That's a basswood right there. That's a hackberry, shingle oak, shingle oak. There's a basswood in the background. 
your oaks, basswood, box elder, elm, ash. All those trees, I like to leave the stump and let them grow, or I hinge cut them and let the tree itself grow. One last thing I kind of wanted to show you is most of these trees I wanted to keep alive. Shingle oaks, basswood, if I see any box elder, elm or ash, I'll either hinge cut them or I'll stump them off and let the, the sprout, the stump sprout out. This is a honey locust and when I see a honey locust I try to eliminate it. The deer will eat those long bean like looking pods but they do a lot of damage to my tractor tires and I typically just don't like honey locusts. In this case I can either cut the tree down and treat the stump or in the case of a honey locust because I don't want them thorns out in this brush I just made I'll girdle the tree and then I'll spray the girdle with a mix of 50-50 diesel fuel and triclopyr. The name brand triclopyr I'm using here is Remedy Ultra. 50-50 with diesel fuel in the girdle and this, this tree will be dead come spring. Just want to show you kind of how I do that. That's it. This tree will be dead. See these thorns? See these thorns? I can't stand these honey locusts. Last point I'd like to make. In my area, one of my favorite woody browse species is coral berry. And the reason why I like it is it never really gets higher than this, so it's always available for deer to browse, and the, the leaves stay green a long time into the fall. Well, this area I pick, this little pocket, is full of coral berry. So not only have I created this soft edge where deer now can bed around these brush piles and out on this little flat here in this ridge, I'm also opening up the sunlight in this little pocket for this coral berry. All the way down this edge now, thick, thin, thick, thin. Next year deer will be using this like crazy. Give you a couple different angles. This is coming from the switchgrass side. I would say that pocket's about 20 yards long. And then we'll start another one down there. Okay, a final look here. I'm actually walking down a deer trail that was here before I started, kind of on this flat. So there's that pocket out in the switchgrass. And you notice I left this trail open. I didn't want to drop any trees on this trail. And then here I'm back in about 10 yards. Dropping some basswood, a couple more shingle oak. All along this edge is that coral berry. There's that honey locust that I girdled and treated stump. So that's it. Let me swing around here real slow. Well, I wanted to get back and show you this edge that I softened up last year. And there's two reasons, there's two reasons why I know deer were using this soft edge. The first is one of my hunters shot a nice buck in October. We actually had to track him through here. And as long as we were in this area, I thought, well, I'm just gonna scout this edge a little bit and I'll turn the camera around and show you it. And there was a ton of beds, ton of deer poop, uh, rubs, I didn't see any scrapes, but we were just tracking that deer that were using this edge. 
The second reason is late muzzle loader. I had the opportunity to sit a, a blind back behind me here. And as I was watching along these warm season grasses and along this edge, I actually saw a pretty good buck stand right up out of its bed right behind me here. And I could see him from the blind and I did film him a little bit. Let me see if I can just get that tree stand in the... Oh yeah, you can see it way back there. So it's about 200 yards, 175 yards maybe. And right there is where he was bedded. I saw him stand up out of his bed. So I always talk about the importance of having, when you're doing these edge softening, going thin and thick and thin and thick. Well, here's the reason why. This is the edge of it, big trail right here. And then as we go, you can see our first really thick spot here. Trees out into the grasses. So this is where they're gonna bed around these clumps of cover. And then in between the clumps of cover is where they can move in and out freely. So now here we got our next spot, just a couple tops, and then all the way down this edge, thick and thin and thick and thin, and there was beds and droppings and stuff all along this edge. I'll give you a view from the inside. Quite a few big rubs in there too. A little bit harder to show you from the inside, but I'm actually standing on a well-used deer trail right on the inside. But you can see all behind me on this thick edge, woody brows, briars, rubs, this is good habitat. This is where deer are gonna bed along this edge. Not so much if it's agriculture fields right to mature timber. Well, that's a wrap for the edge softening video here on my farm, edge feathering video, as people call it. I hope you try the thick and thin method along these edges, and I think you'll have good luck. It's a really good, quick, fast way to create a lot of good habitat and bedding habitat along your field edges. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more videos coming out soon.